Hey everyone! Welcome back to another round of AI news, drama, and updates. Today we have a ton to cover, and as always I'm going to try to keep things succinct. The first order of business is Stable Diffusion itself. I don't have any major announcements yet about what's going on with the Stable Diffusion models that they've announced, but we're all still waiting with bated breath for whatever these big announcements are that are coming down the pipe from Emad and his team. Like I said in my previous video, I anticipate it's going to be some kind of collective that tells us what we can and can't do with the models safely, so be prepared for some nerfing or some restrictions, because I don't imagine they're going to open things up any further than what we already have. It also looks like, and though I don't have any personal experience with it yet, there do appear to be both Photoshop and Krita add-ons now, which allow you to use Stable Diffusion, or at least some part of Stable Diffusion, within the program. Keep an eye out for future videos, I'm going to cover this in a little bit more in-depth when I have a chance to kind of get my hands on it and mess with it, though I would imagine we're probably going to see the Photoshop version be far more supported because there is going to be that conflict of interest within the Stable Diffusion team and Adobe. I also saw an add-on for Blender. Now I did have a chance to try this one out myself. I will say for the purposes of Blender and three-dimensional art, it's probably not as creative a tool as you might imagine because we're talking about creating a 2D thing within a 3D environment. So for me and for my experimentation, it didn't allow me to create anything new that I couldn't before. It really just allows you to do kind of an image to image after you've already done a render. And to be honest, having Stable Diffusion ready and running while you're running Blender, it pretty much eats up all of your video RAM. So I, I'm not sure how great this particular add-on is, but it's a cool thing to do. And as we're talking about three dimensions and the three dimensional world, I did come across this cool thing I wanted to share with you. Here's an example of someone using Stable Diffusion after they've designed something within a three dimensional real world type of environment. It looks like they've got Stable Diffusion running alongside a MetaQuest Pro. So they're building something in three dimensional space and then every so often it does an image to image and it changes it into a prompt based thingamajig, which seems pretty awesome. A quick thing that I wanted to cover, not so much news as it is just fun, is Reddit has given itself a challenge with the Lo-Fi Girl YouTube channel and trying to turn her image into something through Stable Diffusion, make it look a little bit better. So here's a couple of examples that I came across, probably not anywhere close to everything, but wanted to give you guys an idea, it's a lot of fun. And I saw a number of different examples, I'm not going to put them all here, but a number of different things within the Unreal Engine and the Unity world where a lot of video game creators are bringing some of these images and some of these tools into their programs. So we're starting to see some AI-generated art and AI-generated game assets within the video game space as well. All right, so that's going to cover most of the Stable Diffusion stuff. Let's talk about DAL-E. And this isn't about Bing, this isn't about Edge. We're actually talking about an API. An API is basically going to allow a programmer to connect to DAL-E within their app or within their program. And it's going to do it for a very low cost, because apparently DALI is only charging about two cents an image, and we're talking about a 1,024 pixel image. It's really not bad. It's a very competitive price. So, contrary to what I said, you may not have heard the last of DALI. On the topic of cost efficiency, I want to segue into that as I talk about OpenAI. So OpenAI is a very expensive and very large scale model. And what I came across was basically just references that it's a bit too much. And if this post is any indicator, it can sometimes cost as much as 8,000 to 600,000 times more to institute an open AI type solution versus something that's smaller, streamlined and open source. So not really great for them, but uh, score one for open source, huh? All right, moving on to Runway ML. This has been a big, big week for Runway ML, all kinds of different releases. They've talked about infinite image and they talked about frame interpolation. So let's take a look at Infinite Image. Now, is this much different than Stable Diffusion's Infinite Image that you've seen? Probably not. It's in a nicer interface. And with all of Runway ML's stuff, all of the compute is done as a service. So right now, I believe you can use all of this stuff for free as a demonstration. I don't know that they're even charging for any of this stuff yet, so go ahead and give it a shot. Doing something like Infinite Image or even something like Frame Interpolation and doing it in a service type of environment where you've got a supercomputer doing a lot of that stuff for you, it's very convenient. Personally, I don't want to get spoiled because I'm not looking forward to getting locked into a service that I have to pay for. I'm not a big fan of cloud services. I built a supercomputer for a reason and I want to try to use that as best I can, but you do you. And talking about doing some of this stuff at home, let's talk about some of the updates we've seen to the web UI this week. Conditioning strength was a topic of a couple of different YouTube videos. Some people made entire half hour videos dedicated to this very simple topic. Just go into your settings. There's a slider that adjusts how effective denoising is. That's it. Anyway, there's also an extensions and an extension installer now. 
That can be huge news for a lot of you that have been really struggling to find the extensions as they've been split apart from the main project. Some of you may have seen parts come and go and maybe wondered where they went. Not all of those things were originally created by Automatic, nor should he have been responsible for maintaining all of that. So those things were naturally split apart into separate projects and they went to their various maintainers. But now we've got a place that everything can be combined into one place again and it makes it a lot more convenient for you to turn things on or install things. Switching gears from the AI art world and talking a little bit about AI in general, we're seeing a lot more about AI code writing out there. There's a service now called Replit, which is similar to Copilot, but Replit is service where you can just simply write code with AI assistance. Services like this, as you can imagine, are very similar to how Novel AI was trained off of novels, where this was trained off of codes. So I would imagine not too much different from something like Copilot, but maybe more or less effective. I never had a chance to try it out, but if any of you have or have any opinions about it, feel free to let me know in the comments or hit me up in Discord. One thing that's a little concerning, and I'm going to say this in kind of a joking way, is I'm seeing some, some very cute written articles that are very innocently talking about robots that are self-improving and writing their own code. So that is Skynet, essentially. That, that's the start of Terminator, uh, just to remind everybody. But Google's doing that. So we've got the Google blog where robots are writing their own code now, and uh, we've got examples of robots writing their own code. And that's happening right now, you guys. But I don't want anyone to worry, because if you'll remember when Google was founded, they were founded under that whole don't be evil thing. So you have really nothing to worry about. Uh, but on the topic of Google, there's a couple of other things I did want to cover. Uh, they purchased a company called Alter that no one's heard of, but it's going to be something that they're probably going to use for their version of TikTok, maybe for YouTube shorts or something along those lines. Alter looks to be an AI avatar service. So that's what I would imagine it's for. They had a couple of changes to YouTube recently, so I wouldn't be surprised. And their version of AI art generator called Imogen, or Imagine, I'm not really sure how they want me to pronounce it, so I'm just going to go with it. Uh, that's going to be coming out in a very limited capacity. And it looks like the version that they're going to allow people to use and access will have very limited prompts that you can make. If you're interested, you just want to download their Test Kitchen application. In the weird world of AI, we can speak to animals now, or at least very specific types of animals. So computers and AI are working together. They've got robot bees now with AI involvement. So you take a robot bee and you put it in a hive and it does a little dance, right? And it makes the other bees do the other dance or it kind of stuns them. It's interesting how this article reads out because it, you know, if we thought we hit ethical boundaries with the whole AI art thing, just wait until we can control swarms of bees with AI robots. And on a very different note, uh, image to music is a thing that exists. So you can take an image, you can upload it, and you can hear what this image sounds like. I absolutely, of course, cannot vouch for what the sound is going to sound like. I didn't create any of this stuff, but it is becoming one of the more popular things that you can check out on Hugging Face yourself. I also wanted to show you guys a short clip of an AI-generated voice. I came across this video just last night, so I haven't had a chance to really dig in yet, but here we go. There's going to be a link in the description below so you can check out the whole video on your own if you're interested. From what I understand, this whole voice was done with AI. And the last thing I want to do as I close out the video is I want to talk about the topic that you're seeing a lot of popping up, and it's called bias within the AI landscape. I wanted to save this topic for last because it is opinion based. There's not going to be a ton of fact out here, but I mean, we all realize that there are biases within each of us. There are biases within the human race. Thus, it stands to reason. There are biases in everything that we do. And AI is just another human creation, and it's going to be just as broken as we are. So as you see lots of articles pop out, as you see a ton of different media come out about bias and revealing bias in the world of AI, I urge you not to be surprised. I urge you to ask, how are we going to fix that? Not just in AI, but in ourselves. Because to be honest, it's a bigger problem in ourselves than it is in the world of AI. And I'll leave you with that because I don't have a solution, not something that's going to fix bias within the human race. That would be a heck of a video though, right? Um, I mean, if you, any of you guys got any ideas, definitely drop those in the comments below because those would be incredible. 
I mean, like, jokes aside, bias is going to exist within all of this stuff. The training data came from humans. There are majorities and minorities within the human race. There's going to be bias in each person who's helping to train the data. There's going to be bias in every human creation that was used to train the data, whether it's a book, a story, an image, a magazine, our own history. Those are the biases that the training data has already kind of preset as the defaults. So if we're asking ourselves, where did those defaults come from? We have to look inwardly. Because at the end of the day, if we end up with an unbiased model and biased people, that's still a huge problem. And if we want a model that's going to have equal representation, equal rights, and equal all of that, we need to solve those problems in the real world first. And really, that does take priority. While I can understand it's a very sensational sounding topic, it's not really a sensational concept when you think about it. And on that note, I will leave you for today. I do appreciate those of you, especially those of you who made it to the end, those of you who did a like or a comment, any of that YouTube algorithm stuff, I really, really appreciate it. But as always, thank you for watching.